arrived at the Crone House, but you wouldn't know it from a glance. As a matter of fact, the first week has looked the same every morning. Rain, darkness, cold, and wind. Most years, the Crone House is bursting at the seams this time of the year, with flats of seedlings under grow lights, sweet potato slips growing on the kitchen windowsill, and often, newly hatched baby chicks peeping from the warm center room we normally use as our library and guest space. We're always grateful for the rain here in California as we get so little of it during the course of a year. We put out a jar each winter to catch the rain to use on our altars. This jar is half full and in just a few days it will be full ready to strain and store in our cupboard. The shock is real as I make my way each morning from my warm bed down the chilly hallway to the kitchen where my husband has built a cozy fire. Normally, we greet this Sabbath that marks the reawakening of the earth and the return of noticeable light into our lives by burning the remaining greens of Yule and returning the spirit of the grain into our garden with the burning of the corn jolly we fashioned during last year's harvest. These bits of housekeeping have yet to happen, as the high winds and ceaseless rain have made our building, our ritual fire, impossible. The acquisition of new chicks and flats planted with the beginnings of this year's crop will have to wait until it warms up a bit as well. Until then, the steaming pot of tea will brace us as we begin our day. Greetings, blessed Imolk. I realize we're a couple, week, couple weeks into Imolk by now. Um, those of you who have been watching the news probably know we're under a deluge here in California. We have had so much rain and so much cold and so much wind and we're here, we're very fortunate here at the Grown House that we don't have any major issues to deal with, which a lot of other people do. So I'm really happy for that. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you to those of you who have reached out to us with concern. We're fine. Um, we have some small things to deal with, but nothing, nothing that we can't handle. But it's a frustrating time for us, of course, like it is for everybody. We're so anxious for... Imolk means the greening of the earth again, right? The green is returning. The fertility is returning to the land. And we are halfway, technically, between um, between winter and spring. We're halfway. We're midway. And even Punxsutawney Phil, our old friend from back in Pennsylvania, has forecasted an early spring. So we were excited about that. Where is it, Phil? <laughs> I don't know that Phil applies to California because I think most people in Pennsylvania think we have spring all the time in California. We don't. We don't. Um, it usually gets very lovely here. But one truth, one truth remains, when there is no sun, there is no warmth. And that's what happens when it rains. It's very cold. Our houses are not made for rain, made for cold temperatures. And we are very cold here. <laughs> so we're anxious to get outside in the warmth when it comes. I put, I'm going to take a few minutes to say, I put a few videos up. I'm going to hope to put up some eye cards up here. I don't know if that's, I've never done it. Never done it. So we're going to try, but at the very least, I'm going to have the links in the description box below this video, where you can look at some of my older videos about Imolk. I think I have a lot of information that you might be interested in. One particularly is the burning ritual that I wanted to bring to you this year. <laughs> I was very hopeful to bring it to you this year. It's going to be done when it happens. When it happens, it's not going to be as big as it normally is. But I do have a video of it that I will link. The title of the video is uh, Ordinary Witches Doing Ordinary Magic. And that is, we are we are burning the greens. We always burn the greens at, um, from leftover from you, we burn them at Imolk. We also burn the corn dolly that was fashioned in at Lama's time. We fashion a corn dolly 
where the, the, the spirit of the grain is kept safely inside the corn dolly until we are ready to burn it and return the ash of that burning to the land to feed, to return the, the God of the grain back into the land to bless our garden. So we're going to be doing those things. Last year we ha we got rained out and by the time we got to the corn dolly, we had to do that in the fireplace. But I will, I will link that. Uh, so if you want to see it, and it also has some good information, the first part of that video has some good information about uh, about what we're doing and why we're doing it. I also have some good videos from um, five and six years ago about a milk. One is very interesting you might want to watch um, from 2015, a milk of 2015, and then another one at, um, I think maybe it's a year later, I'm not sure. But if you if you want more information about that, or maybe you're all had them at your fill from other places, but I'm going to link them none the, none the, nonetheless. The good news is, I want to remind you at this time before I get started, that Imolk, I say, lasts for six weeks or for or so. The Sabbaths are eight Sabbaths of the year, and for me and my practice and for my husband, we do usually have a ritual that marks the Sabbath like everyone else, but um, the Sabbath, the energy of that Sabbath remains until the energy of the next Sabbath begins. This is a slow journey, slow transition from one to another. There's not a hopping. There's not, we're not hopping around the wheel. <laughs> it is a milk until it becomes Ostara. So we have lots of times and there's lots of activities that can be done and they can be done when it is time for them to be done. We can't hurry, we can't rush it. We cannot rush it. Okay, so, but in the meantime, we can do some things. There's other ways that we can celebrate the returning of the, the um, greeting of the earth, return of spring, and uh, celebrate the, the the fertility of the land. So let's go and see what we can do. I'm a little bit frustrated because I normally plant, have a lot of things, a lot of seeds started in my house by now. And the house has been so cold that we haven't even attempted to do anything until just a few days ago, I started some potato slips on some heating mats. It's just too cold in the house to start things. Things won't grow well. And it is so wet and cold outside. The ground is saturated. Everything is mud. There's just no chance even to start some pots outside of some cool weather things. So I'm kind of stuck. And I know a lot of you live in climates where it's it's still really winter. So it might be too too soon for you to start things anyway. Remembering that you have to go backwards from your last frost date, from whatever zone you are in, to start seed and allow so many weeks for things until they're ready to transplant anyway. So, you know, because once things are ready to go in the garden, it's usually better for them to be to put in there. So I have a little activity here that I'm going to be really nice. I thought it would be fun. A little bit of, we're going to plant some seeds. We're going to plant some seeds, but we're going to plant them with intentions. We're going to plant our intentions as well with them. Um, we want to give thanks for the new season and growth, which is coming. It is coming. And we want to, um, I'm going to plant some intentions as well in with my seeds. Okay. So what I have here, I just have a real simple saucer. Okay. A real simple saucer. Um, and I have these biodegradable peat pot. I don't know what they're made of. They're peat. I don't really like them too much because they're supposed to break down. Um, when you plant them, but if you're going to use these you need to when they're ready to transplant you do need to break the bottom off and break the lip down a bit because It just really doesn't they don't transplant as well as some as some other kinds do But they're good. They're good for this for what we're doing here We don't want to put these plastic or things like that and they're a nice size It'll give me a chance to grow some things and I picked some pepper seeds because while peppers are a um perennial here in California. Some people bring them in and will um, keep them in for the winter, like in a pond and bring the pond inside and, and keep it cut back and grow. We just leave ours, we cut ours back in the garden and leave them in the garden. And sometimes it, they winter well and sometimes they don't, but we have enough of them that it doesn't really matter. The good thing about most peppers, especially the hotter varieties are that, um, they produce a lot of peppers on one plant, so you don't need a lot of plants. 
But I have three um, kinds of seeds here for whatever reason that I thought would be fun to grow when I do take these outside, when they're big enough to go outside, I'm going to put them in a container rather than into the ground. They're not quite as big of a plant and um, I have some other ones that are taking up a lot of room in the beds. And something I recently was made aware of is that pepper plants do very well as house plants near, you know, and we have a really nice sunny window. They are a plant that when they are ready to be planted outside and it's not where the conditions aren't ready yet, you can go ahead and leave them in a sunny window and they can grow inside the house, which is something I never realized. I thought because we've had some issues in the past with some of our transplants, holding them too long in the house until the conditions were right outside. And then they became kind of pot bound. And we thought that was going to be true of the peppers, but, but it's really not. They, they seem to do really well inside. So I'm going to little overplant these a little bit and see if I can keep them inside because definitely these do need heat to germinate. So after I to, after we do this little exercise here, after this little, um, after this little um, activity, I'm going to be taking this and putting it on a heat mat because it's really, like I said, too cold and peppers do need warmth to germinate. Okay. So I'm going to be doing that. Okay. So anyway, I have these, the, the, the biodegradable little pea pods here. I have some organic soil. This is just potting soil. Um, seed starting mix is good. I don't know what we are going to have, but it's a sterile making sure it's never been outside. It's been in the house. I just came out of the bag. I sometimes make my own mix, but this, I just got out of a bag. I think it'll be fine. Okay. And I have my seeds. I have, um, some shishito peppers, which I really love. Shishito, my family loves shishitos. Um, pep, I have banana peppers. I've never really grown banana peppers. They're not really that commonly found here in California. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for all of California, but here in Southern California where I live, there's so many other peppers. The, the banana pepper kind of gets um, overlooked maybe, but I know back east where I'm from, um, they grow them a lot and my roommate from college grows them a whole lot of them and I really I'm sort of growing these for her Because I've really never successfully grown them. I thought I was growing them last year But they ended up to be something else not banana peppers and then I hear I have a petite These are just bell peppers, but it's a petite mix of peppers You know, you don't ever know they're all different kinds on one plant and um, You just don't know or I'm in we don't know what the seeds are. They're just some kind of variety of small peppers. So we're going to see what that happens. Usually the colors, different colors. But um, most peppers are green when they're underripe. And then they will all ripen to either a red or a purple or sometimes an orange or whatever. But they're all green to start out with. So that's, we'll see. Okay, so I have these in my soil. And it's the soil is kind of moist. And I will water it a little more after this. For right now and then I just have some popsicles that I put them here I wrote banana shishito and um, petite bell mix on my popsicle so I remember which one and I'm going to just use those to rough up the dirt a little bit and to plant but the other things that we need the only other things we need for this are I just have a candle here this is just pretty old candle but I've never used it it's kind of wrecked <laughs> um, but anyway, what I like about this one is I have room here to set this one down in between. And I don't even have to secure it to the tape, the tablet. It'll sit there really nicely until I want it to, as long as I need to use it. I would maybe normally oil the candle with some kind of oil to, um, to raise the energy of my attention. But honestly, in this room, I have so many other things going and so many other... And I have my spell table over here with this, my spell set up, uh, which I'm going to begin on the new moon. And um, I have my black hat oil over there and I can put that over there with that. I also have, there's so many other things in this room at this time that I think it's kind of overkill. I don't really think I need to oil it. But also I'm going to be doing a tarot reading to go along with this. So I really don't want the oil in my hands if you're going to be on, the tarot, on my tarot cards. But you could, you could oil it and you could also rub some incense on here. I have some incense burning here, so I'm not going to be putting on the candle, but that'd be a really nice thing to do. Okay. So what I'm going to just do is just, first of all, let's get the peppers put in here 
And what I want to do is I have the incense going first and I'm lighting, I have the incense lit and, and while the incense is lit, this is a really good time to ground yourself and maybe, um, handle the dirt a little bit, put your hands and your fingers in the dirt a little bit, take some breaths, take some good breaths to get yourself nice, nicely grounded. Try to connect to that earth. I love this beautiful, fresh earth outside my window. It's just puddles and water and mud. And so this is really nice to, to take some time, you know, and maybe um, you could also trace your sigil in the, in the soil if you wished to. Um, and, and then I'm going to just poke some holes where I'm going to put some seeds. Okay. So I'm going to take the, um, oh, okay. But I'm, what I, all I'm going to do right now is kind of rough it up. I'm going to rough this up, rough up this, this soil because I put it in pretty tight. Okay. Because I also want to, um, going to kind of broadcast this a little bit on here. So I'm going to take, here I have a shishito. I'll put the shishito here. And I'm going to open this up. And um, I would normally, in a pot this size, only put like maybe two seeds in it. But in this one, I'm, I don't want, I'm not worried about crowding them, crowding them at all because I can always transplant them. But here, this is what I made on your package. It usually tells you, um, I should see these sprout in seven to 10 days. And these need to be started inside in eight to eight to 12 weeks before the last frost date. Frost date. So if you're not gonna be planting till April, May, you need to count back how many it is. And these are pretty sizable seeds. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop some on the surface. These are shishito. I don't need to have too many, but you know, I'll put this back in here. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to do anything with the seeds until I get them all on here. Okay. And then I have here, what do I have here? Banana, banana pepper. And I, again, I loosened up my soil and I'm just going to put some banana pepper in these the same way, eight to 12 weeks before moving outside. Well, that's not the case here because we don't have a frost. We do not have a frost date here where I am, but still we don't, we usually plant things out around March. You know, that's a really good time. Around Ostara is usually when we put things out, but the most important thing for us here is nighttime temperature. And we want our nighttime temperature to probably be in the high 40s, you know, at least here would be good for peppers. Maybe, um, you know, 50 degrees would be ideal. Um, so it's going to be March or April probably for that out. Okay, and then here I have the petite, the mixture of the bell peppers, the, the, the mixture of the petite, little petite bells. Okay, and that's going to go in this one. So real simple. Now, I'm not a farmer. <laughs> I'm not, this is not a gardening channel. So if you think I'm doing things wrong, I may be, but I'm just showing you what kind of things that I do. I do so, we pretty much grow most of our things now from seed. This year I'm gonna be trying some different kinds of starting, <clears throat> some of my seeds starting. And I will be happy to share that if you want. If you're interested in that, leave it in the comments below. This one doesn't have very many seeds in it. Oh, it says it has 10 in here. Those are pretty expensive seeds. But these are, these are organic. Okay, I'm just going to put five. Okay, so all of my seeds are in the soil. And before I plant, before I really uh, put them in, plant them well, I want to take a minute and I want to think about my intentions. What are my intentions 
that I have with these seeds. Okay, what are what are my exact intentions? I, I want to um, identify some of the intentions that I have. And I'm gonna take, here's my old trick, if you watched my video on the on my spell, I'm gonna use these little post-its, these little tiny, I don't know what they're called, they're little strippy ones, and write some intent, a little intention on here. And I'm gonna plant my intention in my pot. I'm gonna plant that in there. So, um, and remember your intentions are your the beginnings of a dream or desire for something you really want to manifest in your life. These are not just like little wishes. These are things that you really want to have happen in your life. Um, so if you want, let's say, you know, say because I have one that is related to this, some more magic in my life. What I know what that means to me. And I'm just going to take that off my word. And I'm going to just, um, just I'm going to just roll it around, roll it up really tiny. Because I don't want to take up too much of the plant. Too much of my dirt. Okay. And so that is also going to go in. That's going to go in my pot with other things. Okay. So that's one. And then what other things from my other pots I want to put on here? Um, maybe I have some ideas concerning my health. And so I'm going to put my health on here and I'm going to roll it up. And then along with my seeds, this is going to be implanted. This is going to be planted with my intention. Okay. I'm going to really poke that one down inside. And then I have one more here. Um, Jump will write. And I'm going to put that one in here. Put this one in with the little bell peppers. Okay. So these are all in here, ready to go. And now this is where we really want to uh, raise some energy. I want to raise some energy here. So I'm going to take, I'm going to, let me see. I'm going to put the, you can use a pencil. Just poke those seeds down in a little bit in the dirt. We don't want to see them. They don't have to be covered. They don't have to be very deep because they're little seeds. And we do want them to, um, we want this, we don't want air in there. We want them to become in contact with the soil really well. And make sure our intention is covered. I cover my intention. And that paper will just break down inside this, um, in my soil. It'll be fine. It'll compost in place. And okay, now remember I'm thinking about my intention. My intentions for the year coming the beginning of the star. It's like a New Year's resolution, but it is an intention. We actually really wish to manifest this. Okay, that was really simple, wasn't it? Okay. Now I want to take these that can be firmly put in there. And again, I want my candle. And again, if you have oil, that would be perfect. Or if you have it, um, put incense on it, that would be perfect. But I'm just going to light it. My incense is still burning and I'm going to light my candle. I should have trimmed that, but I didn't. It's fine. altars. 
especially when I'm doing any kind of magical workings or anything uses or we have any kind of a ritual this is what I would use and whatever I used to I used to use it was until it was up the sabbat was up and then I would I would start another kind but I started making my incense cones and I'm using so much incense by cone that I don't use as much as I used to so what I love to do is just add it to this bowl whatever's left I will add to the bowl and this represents a whole year's worth of incense it's all kinds and then when we have our burning ritual for um, Imhoff out of doors that's been rained out <laughs> for the second year in a row I think we've been having issues this is what we burn or any other kind of thing outside this is what I will burn on on a big in a big cauldron outside which is really lovely so I just want to share that I'm not burning this today but I'm going to have a little Definitely, when I get a chance to go out there and pour in my colorful and dolly and do the other things for the ritual, this is going to be burned. Just want to share that. Okay, so, well, I don't have to move it so you can see it. This is going to stay there. So, um, the candle has been lit, and I want to really watch the flame now. I want to spend a minute or so to watch that flame, and as I watch the flame, I want to think about, really think about the intentions that I put Once you visualize with the flame, using the power of the flame, which represents the, the spark of the idea or the spark of the dream that we have inside us that we want to see grow in order for our intentions to manifest. So I want to imagine them growing within the flame, which is now in me. So I'm passing over that energy. reading that I would like to put out some cards with that while the candle burns that have to do with the same intention it's about my intentions so you can adapt this any way you would like to it's just a really fun it's a fun activity I really love to do and it makes me feel like um, the, the spring is the spring is coming the fertility is returning I just can't see it but the fertility is coming to this land and when the sun comes out we're going to between Yule and Imolk, I do a lot of shadow work with my tarot. And about five years ago, I was at a, a similar place in my life than I am today, I find myself. And I did a reading that I really loved that that was um, that came as a part of the, in the little white book that goes with the Deviant Moon Tarot, which is a deck that I use a lot for shadow work. And I did a reading, I think, and I have a, I have a video on that that I will, I will um, put a link to in the description box. But that reading was coming out of the shadow of the deviant moon, coming out of the shadow, ready to go into the light. Um, anyway, I really loved the reading; it gave me really great results. So I liked the, I liked the spread, but I didn't, I wasn't. I, I, this wasn't a shadow so much as a 
the similarity wasn't so much coming out of the shadow, but in search of the light, looking at the light. And I was, I was really drawn to this deck here, which I have used in the past. This is the um, Force of Enchantment Tarot. And I really love this deck for a lot of reasons. I don't do a lot of videos with using this deck because the cards, it's hard to show the cards up on the, you know, the artwork of the cards is, um, it's subtle, it's subtle. <laughs> a lot of shades of greens and grays and browns and colors that, that are really beautiful for the forest, but not so beautiful for YouTube videos. Um, but anyway, I love this deck so much and particularly because in the introduction of this book, it mentions there's a, a comment in the introduction here where it says myriad characters and creatures dwell in the forest, but for most humans in these tales, it is a place you pass through to get somewhere else. You can't see very far ahead in the forest, as you can in an open landscape or on the sea. Things may change quickly for good or ill. You may find what you seek, or you may not even know what you seek until you find it. And I love that. I love that description of the working your way through the forest on your way to someplace else, which is where I find myself. And sometimes I think I see hints of light. Other times I'm back in the shadow, back in the darkness again, where I'm not sure where I am or where I'm going. So I really love this for this reading, for that reading. So I hope you will um, accept my apology that this might be a little bit of a difficult um, reading to share on YouTube. I, I hope you I hope you will get the meanings from the card. Um, I'm, I have it here beside my candles here that I have that I am capturing sparks from my intention and putting them into these these little plants normally if I was going to be doing this if you were going to do it at home if I wanted to to um use this for your own purposes I would be putting the the saucer of the cards in the middle of the table and I would be placing my cards and then the deviant moon it suggests going wittershin so it goes going anti-clockwise around and placing my cards around the outside. But if I were to do that, you would not be able to see them. I would not be able to see them. My chair here at this table is very low. So that would not be so good for TV. <laughs> but, um, so I'm just gonna leave it there in the background and I'm going to, um, I'll just put them here in front. But that's what I would, that's what it calls for and that's what I would normally be doing. Okay. Um, A 10 card spread and it usually it it suggests that the first five of the cards are pretty much in shadow and the remaining five are then coming into the light but we'll see what cards we get when we do it okay the first card here we go Um, here we go. I'll hold the card up. You can see it. The first card that I drew is the four spells. And, um, this card suggests that I'm presently, I'm sorry that you can't see me very well. I'll just hold it up a minute. This card suggests that, that I am presently at a dead stop with the four spells. There's a delay in my progress, but this is going to offer me the opportunity to celebrate everything that has led me to this point to reconnect with what is most precious to me and to acknowledge the achievements I have made or the obstacles that I've overcome in the past. So we're going to put that first. That's where I'm beginning the journey. Okay, secondly, to the second card, I have is the Forge. The Forge. Um, and this is the uh, Temperance card in the Rider Waite. assures me that I'm standing in a position of balance though while I'm standing here 
because it takes all of the elements to utilize, to transform the raw materials of the earth into a masterfully crafted sword, combining. So in the same way, combining all of my life stresses up until this point and all of my blessings up until this point that I've received, this has provided me with the strength to move forward and live anything that lies ahead of me. And boy, the crown of 70 plus years, isn't that the truth? We are a combination of these things. card in this deck which is called the Molly. I hope see this is what I know you can see now what I'm doing about the colors. They just do not show up very well. But the Bali um tells a story. I, I you can see it was a tree that has been hollowed out and a folly has been um constructed inside the tree. It's a story of an indulgent and worthless vanity, a folly constructed inside a hollowed out tree. Um, and resultingly, because it was not strong, it was, you know, it um, compromised the strength of the tree. There was no remaining structure left or substance to bear the strain of the bill that they put in this tree. So a version of the tree dying from the inside out, cracked and fell into ruin. And this card asks me, what folly in my own life has come to the point of ending and needs to be destroyed to make room for the new to be and that's really what the tower card is about. It's not about the destruction. It's about the reason for the destruction, even in all decks, it's like built on a, a foundation that could not support, and that is what has caused the resulting fall. Okay. So I need to examine that in my life and give you some thought to that. Okay, the next card is the Huntsman, another major arcana card. addresses my hopes and my dreams I have that have yet to be realized. The husband asks that I listen to my conscience and go forward in a way that works for me. Some hopes and dreams are not meant to be manifested, but might well be the source of the flame that will ultimately grow and lead me forward from a place of truth and honor. It would take time to properly assess my own motives and do what is right. to know it's there. There are always unseen forces that affect us or challenge us in various ways. The five of challenges reminds me that trying to engage with all of them is really self-defeating. This card says you must choose your battles. There will be situations in my life that I will overestimate my chances of succeeding against an opponent but will fail miserably whether due to overwhelming odds or simply because the other will not or cannot engage. Choosing my battles wisely will allow me to live, to fight another day, and to see. Okay. So that's the first five, and that's pretty much coming out of the shadow. We fought our battles, and now where are we going? Okay. As we get into the light, of challenges. The three of challenges tells us that it is unfortunately easy to get lost in the woods and for fateful decisions to be made in a moment of weakness and fear. That's pretty much the sense of story of Young Gretel, doesn't it? And a moment of weakness was this the greatest decision that was made with these children. <laughs> Did you get home and see? I'm so sorry, but they're in there. The Three of Challenges assures us that the journey through the forest is through both patches of light and shadow. The Five of Challenges assured me of the fact 
This card serves as a warning to protect myself and use caution against potentially hurting others. There are many kinds of betrayal and many ways to break your own heart as well. So this is applying not just to hurt that is coming upon me, but hurt that I might cause other people. So I want to really be mindful of that while going forward with my intentions. Okay, card seven. shows a community, look how lovely she's, she's um, being snuggled up by some baby bunnies. Probably would all want that back down on the ground and sit there cold and alone in their, in their warmth and in their company. It shows a community of tender care, one that provides kindness, even in the bleakest situation. I'm asked to be ready to receive unexpected assistance and selfless care. Remember that I'm not alone. graciously offered to me. That's really good news. That's terrific good news. Right? And card eight, Starlight, which was my card for last year. Um, with a star. The forest is full of eternal mysteries, and not everyone I meet Everything I happen upon will be clear in the relationship to me. Well, isn't that the case? <laughs> the star or starlight reassures me that everything happens for a reason, even if I don't know it right away, if I can't figure it out, perceive it right away. Um, time and distance will bring the pattern to light. Hold on to hope and believe in my own destiny. Okay, I have a, I have a path that I'm following. And just believe in it and go forward. Card nine, the six of visions. That one might show up a little better, I'm not sure. The six of visions, you know, or the six of cups is usually the nostalgia card reminding you of happier times. And this is kind of along the same vein. The six of vision is asking me to follow my bliss back to its beginnings. We're never too old to live an enchanted life. The child I once was is still a part of me. What was magic then is still magic today. All I need is to open my mind to it. And I have to tell you the greatest wisdom I have to offer and share with you and the crone as a crone is exactly that. Follow your magic, follow your magic, follow your bliss, follow your dreams. This is what we are made of. We are made of our dreams. And that is what I hear so many people my age just doing what they have wanted to do forever. Just being happy, just having a more magical life, just being more creative and, and experiencing the things that they have longed to experience. Oh, and finally, we have the Enchanter's Wheel at the end. And the Enchanter's Wheel, which, of course, is the Wheel of Fortune in the, in the right, awake, right Awake system. But the Enchanter's Wheel is the great unknown. Things cannot, we can't control, we can't comprehend, comprehend we don't maybe even understand it. Life must be engaged in all its complexity if any meaning is to be found in the journey. Change is inevitable. <laughs> and I love this. In the book, it offers a reference back to counting crows, we would say here in the U.S., but in um, Britain, they would say the magpies, counting the magpies. And you know the rhyme. You've probably heard it, one for sorrow, two for joy whatever, there's variations, but counting crows, forecasting what is to come by how many crows or, or magpies are together in one space. And um, this card, the wheel of the Enchanter's Wheel, reminds us that sometimes there is only one magpie, but another will come in the proper time, changing your sorrow to joy. Change is inevitable. The light will